Hello, and welcome to the Old Boys Network, Legends of Philadelphia. <laughs> These are your hosts, Tony. Do you know who my dad is, Trove? <laughs> and Johnny, my family owns this place, Zito. <laughs> and I'm Brian, outside hire Beerman. <laughs> Even in the fake intro, I don't, I don't get any respect. You might be wondering... Are these guys unqualified enough to talk about nepotism? Well, in addition to being Philadelphia natives, Zito and Trove have a lifestyle brand. South Fellini. Fellini, 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 Fellini. <laughs> that focuses on Philly culture and in-jokes. Lots of times, customers will ask, is Tony Luke the Fifth going to continue the family tradition? Or they want to know if the Philly signed Bryce Harper because his mom is the fanatic. <laughs> True. He's a bird. <laughs> is the fanatic a bird? We'll get into it. We'll get into so it. So we decided to start this podcast as an easy explainer for new Philadelphians and a refresher for the old heads. The city fascinates and excites us, so we're hoping to share that with you. See, I didn't need the script for the last one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've done 20 weeks worth of content, 10 episodes of Legends of Philadelphia. Have we done 150 episodes yet? Yeah, we've passed 150. Yeah, of the podcast? Yeah, no. Certainly. <laughs> And, it's not even and no thanks to you from you people. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want from us? Well, I guess that leads me to today's announcement. This will be the last regular episode of Legends of Philadelphia this year. We're going to make more content, but it's going to live behind the $5 paywall on our Patreon. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be dropping new Legends After Dark episodes on Gary Heidnick's interior decorations, Jerry Pensacola's butt gerbil, Uncle Eddie's pizza boxes, <laughs> and Larry Menti's email hacker. All of these topics would get us in trouble on iTunes or YouTube, but everyone seemed to love the Swiss Cheese Bandit thing we did on uh, Patreon, so we're going to be working blue for a little Too while. Too hot. Too hot for TV. <laughs> Support this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you like what you're getting, but you want more of it. Well, people have always asked us to do perverts. <laughs> <laughs> and we always said no. So now if you. And there's like so much content. There's so many perverts. <laughs> <laughs> so now if you if you want it, you got to. Now we're making you pay for it. Yeah. And, and you're making us pay for it. Yeah. By talking about people putting gerbils up their butt. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. That's Allegedly. the other thing. We're not trying to get sued. That's the other thing. Uh, we'll also be launching. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're not sorry. We're not We're sorry. Not. We're, We're trying to get sorry. their money. We're not sorry. Sign up. We... You have the money. We want it. You got it. You got it. We want it. Give it to me. Give it to us. Five bucks. Five bucks. Come on. We're also going to be launching our food tasting show, Jeet Yet, on Patreon. Man. We'll be doing Birch Beer Blind Taste Tests. Comparing hers versus... What is birch beer? Birch no beer. one knows. We'll get into it. <laughs> Comes no from birch. Knows. You gotta pay. You gotta pay five dollars. <laughs> five dollars. And we'll read the Wikipedia of birch beer. <laughs> For you. So you don't have to. <laughs> we'll be comparing uh, hers chips versus Utz chips. I'm an Utz man myself. That's, <laughs> that's hot, uh, hot Hot. topics. <laughs> you can't You can't come in with uh, prejudging it. You gotta, you gotta go in with yeah, an open gotta, mind. Gotta, I might change my mind. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, Tune in to find out. Maybe we'll have to do that one blind as well. We also need um, sushi uh, ginger to cleanse our palate after each one. That's true. All right, we'll go to Acme. We'll, we'll yeah, get, I just want for the ginger. chips and the ginger. For the chips and the ginger. And we'll go to CVS just to walk around. And maybe most interesting of all, we're going to eat snapper soup. And we're going to have how many Ninja Turtle shredder jokes? Infinite, infinite number. Infinite. We're gonna we're gonna go to the Schuylkill. We're gonna pluck a turtle out of the river. We're gonna boil it in its own shell. We're gonna eat it, and we're gonna eat it, and we're gonna tell you what it tastes like. Yeah, tastes great. It's a Philadelphia uh, delicacy. It is. Former it is. former staple of the city. It was cheese steaks and turtles. S turtle soup. And now nobody has turtle soup anymore. What's that about? No, we're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. We're so, <laughs> tune into the Patreon. Sign up for the Patreon if you want to see that. All of that. Plus, and uh, all this and more behind the scenes artwork, printmaking process videos, more Danny Dejewski hot takes. Who's Danny Dejewski? Yeah, Danny Dejewski is my uh, uh, no cousin. I forgot the the gimmick, but he's my cousin <laughs> who uh, has a lot of opinions. There's also Tony Trove's curated Philly vibes playlists. We have a, have a couple of them up there, but uh, more There's coming. More. Not just songs made in Philadelphia, but songs that exemplify Philadelphia. It's a vibe, vibe list. The last one was Summer Vibes. Yeah. Uh, I, have the, I have a Y100 playlist. <laughs> it's 1999. Preston and Steve are driving their VW bug butt. 
beetle. Scars back and Scars it's, ne- it's never going away. I got an F in math. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's back. So sign up for for these playlists for for these taste tests for these uh, better than this show. Dark yeah. and disturbing better legends of Philadelphia. If you think this, this was good, I didn't even check out the today. things you got to pay for. <laughs> I just rolled in. There's a five dollar tier where you get all this stuff. Yes, and then there's ten dollars where you get that and plus offer codes and uh, secret menu items and and hand, high fives, right? Right. Five dollar tier, low fives, high. F- Ten dollar tier, high fives. Forever, forever. Just from Trove, though. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I'm Just, not part of this. But this is a Trove. There's though. a fifty dollar tier where I will draw you whatever. Uh, let's look. Let me look up the how many we have. I want to check the live. So so far we are up to. Uh, so zero people have signed up for that. <laughs> um, but. Uh, but it's you, there you, if you want it. You've been taking well, art classes too. Yeah, I bought that book. And I, I draw. Yeah, and I stopped after three days because I got it. I figured. <laughs> I got it. You're ambidextrous. You can draw. Yeah. A sun with in the corner. In the moon. Both, in the both, moon with the other hand. <laughs> with both hands. Don't you want that? I'll draw whatever you want, or I'll. What else did we say? I was. I will do. I will do whatever. Without meeting you or taking my clothes off for fifty dollars a month, <laughs> cost ca- casting a wide net. You there. Can't get that anywhere. <laughs> Is Terry Gross going to do that? No. W H Y Y launched a history podcast, and they think they're going to come at us. And guess what? Are you for real? That's right. Are you for real? W H Y Y launched a history podcast. That's right. That's our thing. That's right. And we invented history. They're going <laughs> to. They're doing one on the Swiss cheese pervert. What? Wow. That's right. They're doing one. Are on, they really? They're doing one <laughs> on <laughs> high lit and and uh, the geeter. Those the, we covered these topics. They, Iverson look, sneakers. They're, they're, no they're, one else ever did that. Iverson sneakers. That was our thing. <laughs> no. Look, they're they're a nonprofit. So give them a break. So are we. We are for profit. We, so we are for profit. profit. Yeah, but we're not making any profit. <laughs> Sign up so for our Patreon so we can really stick it to Terry Gross. Don't you Terry hate Gross. Terry Gross as much as we do? <laughs> do you think Terry Gross will ever find out that we've been talking about her for four years now? I don't know who um, would tell her. I don't know who maybe. would tell her. We have we have some loose. We got to get her on the show. So. <laughs> if, if we do, sparks are going to fly. We're going to need security. Yeah, for her. <laughs> Thumb wrestle. Yeah. The problem is is we don't know any famous people and we are not famous people ourselves and so we'll only we'll only ever get so far on our on our merits. If our parents were famous, then we would be famous. That's though. a good that's a good lead in to. Okay, so today we're talking about uh Nepo babies. Uh, it's been a popular topic of discussion in the last few years. It's not surprising that having wealthy, famous, or connected parents will set you ahead of the competition. But not every Don Johnson does a Dakota Johnson make. What if your mom and dad were only famous in Philadelphia? Does that help or hurt your chances? Does that help or hurt your chances of success? Today, we want to take a look at three Hollywood celebrities with famous Philadelphia parentage: David Boreanaz, Tim McGraw, and Kevin Bacon. Is Dakota Johnson Don Johnson's daughter? To my understanding, yes. Well, I didn't know that. Everyone in Hollywood is related. Oh. <laughs> Everyone in made, Hollywood and politics are related. They made true. those big Johnson t-shirts in the 90s, right? <laughs> oh, wow. That's right. Do you remember Heartbeat. those? Heartbeat. Remember his song, Heartbeat? I do. <laughs> I do want to say, though, before we rip into celebrities, uh, I know this is like a big thing, but this literally happens in every single, like, any career or job, like, I know I've worked for people who only got their job because of their their parents. I, we, we probably all have. If you're a plumber, you know, how many people like, oh, my dad owns a car dealership. So now, I'm, like, if this happens in every. Well, my uh, first job was in my grandfather's sweatshop. So our, see? now our, I make T-shirts. Our relatives made clothes. So it makes sense. We never thought we would end up making clothes. But here we are. Yeah. So. So if you're Nepo babies. We're Nepo babies. Gotta, we're com- t-shirt com- Nepo babies. <laughs> t-shirt Nepo babies. Zito's grandfather came to America. <laughs> With a dream. To, to make dream. bootleg to, t-shirts. To make, <laughs> to make funny uh, t-shirts. I'm going to make it the fanatic on a funny Don't t-shirt. 
We said no racist stuff today. Do we <laughs> <laughs> I can do that, though. Oh, okay. I can do that. So, just, that happens in <laughs> politics. It happens in everything. But celebrities get it worse because people hate celebrities, but we love to hate them. Well, uh, celebrities <clears throat> are advertising who they are and by virtue then who their parents are. Your plumber isn't coming to your house telling you, I come from a long line of plumbers. You know, I got my, my, my Mario grandfather. Mario Luigi Jr. Yeah, my grandfather yeah. invented the, the <clears throat> plunger or something. People really hate LeBron's son, yes. Ronnie. Yes, yes. That's a big topic of conversation uh, right now. Mm-hmm. He got his, LeBron James got his son uh, signed to the Lakers. Yeah. And he doesn't seem to be very talented or exceptionally Mediocrely talented. Mediocrely talented. Okay. Mediocrely talented. But he can prove it's all wrong. Yeah. I believe in him. Also, <laughs> I mean, if you got famous, wouldn't you hire your people you know and all? I definitely would. Yeah. Yeah, I would too. So, so uh, you know, can't help it. We're throwing stones, but we're also glass houses. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> celebrities. <laughs> no, I, I I think what bothers me the most is like the generational wealth, where it's like Andrew Mellon the fourth or whatever is like one of the richest people ever still. Every three generations, <laughs> your family should lose all their money and have to start, start over. Sure. And then we'll see how smart this family is. Yeah. Yeah. Come crawling back. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, right? Hard yes, work. Absolutely. Right? That's that's where money comes from. <laughs> Boots. <laughs> First up uh, today, we're going to talk about Kevin Bacon, who was born and raised in a close-knit Philadelphia family. He is the youngest of six children. Bacon attended Masterman High School in the Spring Garden section of Philadelphia. So he's pretty smart. Yeah, Masterman's a pretty good school. He, uh... He, uh... Their debate team... One of the best in the city. Wow. <laughs> They're masters. They're masters at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> His mother, Ruth Hilda, taught at an elementary school. I just, I just want to applaud you for not making a master. What? <laughs> I, I didn't say that. Oh, you said that. Let's re- redo it and say that. Because <laughs> it sounds like. That's why I said it. We have to bleep that? Can we say that on YouTube? Well, when he said it out of order, that that flies. But when you say it <laughs> you in order, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, when you say it in order, it's got to be I'm bleeped. <coughs> it's a difference between calling someone an ass and saying you're going to stick something in someone. Yeah. Oh. So, thanks a lot. Context. Yeah. It's important. Sorry, Sorry YouTube. Kevin Bacon's mother, Ruth Hilda, taught at an elementary school and was a liberal activist. While his father, Edmund Bacon, was an urban planner who served as an executive director of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission and authored s- the seminal text, The Design of Cities. Now, we've talked about him uh, in the X Games episode in yep. Love Park. Yep. Uh, he did a bunch of stuff in the city. So yeah, we back. talked about him in the South Street episode, too. He's very influential in the city. Planning. By accident. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, still uh, well-known. He wrote a skateboard that one time. Yep. He wrote a skateboard that when one time. When he was time. like in his 90s, that was And he actually he actually taught Kevin how to um kill a tremor. <laughs> oh wow. See? <laughs> it's all about who you know. It's about who tremors. you know. See even the tremors. They're de- my dad was a tremor, so Some of Edmund's achievements include Love Park back when it was cool, Society Hill and Independence Mall. Some of his not-so-great ideas include the Vine Street Expressway, which kind of divided the city with a highway, and then he tried to do the same thing on South Street, which drove down real estate prices, uh, but allowed an artistic subculture to take root, so you take the good. So you when are you going to say the, uh, the good things he did? <laughs> All those Irish food stores on South Street? Oh, yeah. You can thank him. <laughs> <laughs> there, we did two, uh, two episodes on South Street. <laughs> Two part mostly it. dominated by the Irish food. Store. The Irish, <laughs> Irish food. Edmund was such a like a figure in the city that his son was like, "I am out of here. I'm going to Hollywood." Yeah, you're right. It makes sense that Kevin Bacon would want to get out of the city. His dad is super famous. He's literally building. His dad owns the streets, and uh, there's nowhere he can go to escape him. So at age 16 in 1975, Bacon won a full state funded scholarship to the Pennsylvania Governor School for the Arts at. Bucknell University in Lewisburg. It was a five-week art program where he studied theater under Gloria Van Scott, and this led to theater work in New York, which is where Kevin Bacon auditioned for his debut film, Animal House. Oh, wow. That was his first movie? Yep. It's for a first speaking role. I'm sure he was, like, background guy in a couple of things or and on stage and stuff, but it was his first speaking role. I don't remember. Film. Does he have, like, a big part in that? 
Yeah, he's like the he's the he's stuck the... up. Frat oh guy. yeah, he has the polo he's shirt. He's the zit. He's... <laughs> Uh, so do you think Edmund Bacon helped get Kevin Bacon that full state funded scholarship to the Pennsylvania Governor's School for Arts at Bucknell University? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe. To be fair, I have no idea where Lewisburg is. (laughs) (laughs) So maybe that is. Yeah. He's like, I I know where that is. I went to Masterman. So. So you don't think they they don't? Well, it's a, the Pennsylvania Governor School, so it's somewhere in the state. Who knows? By Altoona. <laughs> See a lot of I guess a lot of the things is like, <laughs> with like, I think the counter argument a lot of times is like, but they're like Kevin Bacon's a great actor. Yeah. So, but it's like, but did he not just him, but the people that get to be great actors did they get more opportunities to become to get better than if i I, not like he was um like his parents were actors and like sometimes people will like give like an actor a kid actor because like oh we don't have a connection to your your parents you know there's i don't know how many hollywood people would be like oh wait we'll we'll hire this kid and then his father can design our (laughs) cement parks a cement park (laughs) everyone's gonna want one of those yeah (laughs) <laughs> so no I, I you know maybe advantages in early life but maybe not into show business yeah that's I, but i that's think fair. that's it's the argument with like you know like you guys started a small business but if it's like but we have the support of of our community and our families but if like, it's yeah. like if you're if you have if your parents have money then you have more chances to like fail Right. And be like, ah, this didn't work. Let me try it again. You know, most people don't have that where it's like, oh, I failed and my life is going to be ruined for the rest of my life. Okay. uh, Next, let me introduce you to David Boreanaz. Uh, his family moved to Philadelphia when he was seven years old because his dad took a job at the as the ABC weatherman. You may know him better as Dave Roberts. Yeah. yeah. Who we all grew up watching, really. Yeah. Dave Roberts is uh, uh, America's weatherman. So he was seven years old and people were like. Yeah, but you're not, like, from Philadelphia. <laughs> These transplants moving here. <laughs> Taking all our weatherman jobs. <laughs> Lil Boreanaz had two older siblings, Bo and Beth. He is of Italian and Slovene descent, and he was raised Catholic. He attended Rosemont School of the Holy Child and then Malvern Preparatory School. He graduated from Ithaca College in Ithaca, New York, in 1991 with a degree in cinema and photography. They say it's uh, gorgeous. Full of gorges in Ithaca. Though his father was born to announce the closing of all public and parochial schools, Lil David B. dreamed of stardom, so he moved to L.A. and crashed on his sister's couch, working as a background extra for a few years. Boreanaz's first gig was a 1993 guest spot on Married with Children. That was a big show in 1993. Yeah, seriously. Live audience. Big deal. <laughs> Not, not like this pathetic, empty yeah. room that we're talking to. <laughs> there's, a, there's a guy over there. <laughs> <laughs> David plays Kelly's unfaithful biker boyfriend who gets pummeled by Al Bundy. Nice. Uh, he was later cast in the teen action drama Buffy the Vampire Slayer after being discovered while walking his dog past a producer's house. You I, never know. You never know you'll get discovered in showbiz. Oh, that's pretty convenient. I, pretty, there's more to that story. I think there's maybe more to that. No, I think if you're that's the the real nepotism is if you're born hot. That's the real <laughs> that's the real like decider of what you're gonna do. You know? Do you think he had like a map to all the producers' homes? Yeah, and you're just, just walking walk, around and me, I'm just gonna, with my, oiled up. <laughs> yeah, with my shirt off. I'm just walking my cute little dog. Uh you know Anyone <laughs> casting any hot vampires over here? <laughs> you know, I like jewelry. <laughs> I, what people like don't realize, even like you hear a lot of a lot of nepo babies say they're not nepo babies, is that they even have access to living in these towns. Yeah, like it's hard to move to L.A. It's yeah, hard I, to move. Uh, to New I can't York. afford to live in Philadelphia, so yeah. I couldn't afford to live in L.A. <laughs> Years ago, I actually uh, applied to be a page at NBC. Right, and I couldn't afford to live in New York, and because they don't pay pages, well, they pay you like. A pit, a, cr- a few a peanut butter crackers. You get you know? to eat the leftover crafty. Yeah, I mean, like I didn't get get it, and it's like, well, because you don't live in New York, and it's like, well, I can't af- 
for to move to New York. And it's like you need to have the money and the means to just be there. Yeah. But do you think he got a job because his dad is a weatherman, though? That's I'm, a good point. Well, Boreanaz went on to star in his own Buffy spinoff, Angel, and then he co-starred in the for- forensics procedural show Bones. So he's had a very successful I say, career. No, not in that movie. And Bones was on for a long time. Yeah. And so was Buffy. Yeah. So, I mean, he pro- he spent the better part of 15 years in people's living rooms. Delete, not a, delete this. It's not an Epo baby. <laughs> Boreanaz, you get a pass. You get a pass. Do you think Dave Roberts was like, you, you don't want to, like, show tornado warnings? Like, <laughs> like no, Dad, I don't want that, that, That's not me, Dad. Re- I want to be a vampire, <laughs> a sexy vampire. Reading the... <laughs> Reading the school closings is like you're you're making, you're making and breaking day. you're making or you're breaking hearts. That's true. Yeah, you're breaking children's hearts, and which is kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> when you get <laughs> it you wrong as children. a weatherman, people are coming at you. That is true. That you, is there's true. a lot of pressure, but yeah. you can also get it wrong and no one cares. Like it, you don't lose your job. You know, <laughs> storms you coming. Move on tomorrow. There'll be new weather. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Is Dave Roberts still on? Um, Six ABC. No, he retired. I think in it's in 2011. Uh, in 2011, Dave Roberts and his son David Boreanaz were jointly awarded the gold medal by the Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters for Why their. Why did su- he get one? For their successful careers in broadcasting and acting. This, this, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. <laughs> Dave Roberts deserves one, but why does... Why does the, He's a sexy vampire. Yeah, but not in Philadelphia, though. <laughs> yes, he is. He's a sexy vampire everywhere. <laughs> Wherever he goes, he's technically a sexy, sexy vampire. vampire. Did little David Jr. earn that award, or did uh, yeah. they just give it to him because of who his dad is? No, they did they that, give got yeah, what? Did they give Dave Roberts the award just so they could get David Boreanaz there? No, That's a good Dave point. Roberts earned it. He, Technically, he, he's more famous than his father. I mean, if I saw David Boreanaz walk down the street, I probably wouldn't know who he was. But if I saw Dave Roberts, I would. Maybe you need to start start taking a little more interest. I, I gotta watch more <laughs> Angel. <laughs> More bones. You More bones. You don't watch enough forensic mystery shows. Bones has Emily Deschanel, who is sister to Zoe Deschanel, and their father was somebody, wasn't he? Their father was Caleb Deschanel, who was a. Uh, it's all connected. Uh, People, a cinematographer wake up. from Sheeple, Philadelphia. Wake up. It's that's Open true. Your eyes. Bones is a Philadelphia Nepo show. Everyone on that show is only famous because their dads are from Philadelphia. That's why it's so good. You heard it here first. Yeah, I have to admit that's true. That's it's true. Zoe Deschanel's dad, Caleb, is a super successful cinematographer from Philadelphia, responsible for National Treasure, a Philadelphia movie, mm-hmm. live action Lion King, and Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. So all these vampire people are all in on it, is what you're saying. There's a it's, vampire subculture ring in Hollywood. Finally, let's talk about country music legend Tim McGraw and his daddy, Tug McGraw, one of the more popular Philadelphia Phillies of all time. Legend. Legend. Samuel Timothy McGraw was born in Delhi, Louisiana, to Elizabeth Betty Ann Diagostino, a waitress from Jacksonville, Florida. The father was Frank Edwin Tug McGraw, Jr., a pitcher for the minor league Jacksonville Suns and future star pitcher of the Philadelphia Phillies. I it, His name's Frank Edwin. I never thought about it. I guess Tug is his, uh, his nickname. His nickname? But I thought it was, I just know assumed how got it was that sh- nickname. short for something, yeah. Tugford. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tug McGraw's nickname was Tugger because he's, 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 oh, when he was a kid, he was always caught tugging on his. D- <laughs> <laughs> that was, I made that as a joke. I didn't know. No, it. like that. And I remember actually he used to have a card that was like he was always tugging his toys. And then like I was like that's weird. And then like I don't I, I can't even confirm. We can't it, but that's that. like Are you crazy. You heard? I you really heard? don't want. <laughs> I don't want that. Trove promises this is true. Yes, yeah, cut that. <laughs> in 1966, Diagostino was a student at Terry Parker High School. She lived in the same apartment building as Tug McGraw, who played baseball for Jacksonville. When she became pregnant with McGraw as a teen, Diagostino's parents sent her to Louisiana to live with relatives, where she was married off to a widower named Horace Smith. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know Tim McGraw was Italian. I thought he was like a cowboy. There is Italian cowboys. Dean Martin. <laughs> it's true. You got me there. <laughs> it's sure there were Italian cowboys. That's right. McGraw grew up believing Smith was his father and used his stepfather's surname until age 11. 
Tim discovered his birth certificate and learned who his biological father was for the first time. Whoa. He was just like digging through a drawer and he's like, um, what's this? I'm not who I think I am. Good Good news, bad news. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Your dad's not your dad. Your dad's a major league baseball player. (laughs) So it, it bounces out. Tug McGraw denied the parentage for seven years until Tim was 18 years old and finally made attempts to reform the relationship. So I guess after a while of being... Now that you're raised, (laughs) and I don't have to put in too much work. (laughs) I don't pay child support, so now we can can hang. No, I'll talk to you. (laughs) This is all very upsetting. In 1990, Tim McGraw's career began when he cut a demo record and gave a copy to Tug. One day, a man connected to Curb Records executives heard the demo while driving with Tug. This friend recommended that Curb contact the young singer, singer, and several weeks later, they signed him to a recording contract. So he, he was, was just, just like, driving around with a yeah, record. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to put on a tune. Uh, yeah. Man, I love this song, whoever this is. Did you hear this? Oh, it's not like out. you like country music? Because I do. I, I certainly do. <laughs> I said, I ate that slop. Here like, we go. What was? The, what's this? Oh, this is my son. Uh, his demo that he's looking for a record label. For. He's a musician. Uh, I don't know. I play baseball. I don't want to bore you. <laughs> <at all>. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a what a what a gimmick. Oh, let me just play this song. McGraw made his debut with the single "What Room Was the Holiday In," which was released on March 29th, nineteen ninety one. And uh, it did not enter the Billboard Hot Country I've never heard song charts uh, upon its release. So the program Spurs. director at WXKTU, the, the country station in Philadelphia, recalled that McGraw's debut single was terrible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that he only booked the singer to make an appearance at the station due to his father's fame. Oh. oh. Okay. So that was enough to make Escape Velocity. McGraw went on to have 11 consecutive albums debut at number one on the Billboard Albums Chart. 21 singles hit number one on the Billboard Hot Country Songs Chart. He won three Grammys, 14 Academy of Country Music Awards, 11 Country Music Association Awards, 10 American Music Awards, and three People's Choice Awards. His Soul 2 Soul 2 tour with his wife, Faith Hill, is the highest grossing tour in country music history and one of the top five among all genres of music. Wow. So he's also outfamed his uh, his father. I know McGraw mostly from acting, from movies and stuff. He has ventured into acting several times with supporting roles in The Blind Side with Sandra Bullock, Friday Night Lights, The Kingdom, Four Christmases with Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon. Classic. <laughs> and the Yellowstone spinoff, 1883, which I just watched and was pretty good. Uh, when Tug McGraw died, I remember they had Tim McGraw come to, um, I, I guess it was Citizens Bank, but he like threw out the first pitch They and he was wearing his dad's jersey and they, they did like a big celebration here. And then I remember watching it on the news because they were interviewing him and, you know, his dad is a legend. His dad's as famous as he is like in Philadelphia, like. You know, Tug, you still see Tug McGraw jerseys and stuff. Uh, before we go, <coughs> there are a few Philly Nepo Baby honorary mentions that we wanted to discuss. Uh, Zoe Deschanel's dad, Caleb, came up earlier. But did you know Q from Star Trek, John Delancey? This is such a deep Already cut. know, because I don't know who that is. John Delancey is Q from Star Trek. He's like the he's the guy who snaps his fingers and he makes magic stuff happen on Star Trek. Next generation. I'm a jock, so I don't know what you're <laughs> <laughs> Nerds. <laughs> Well, his dad, John Delancey Sr., was the principal oboist for the Philadelphia Orchestra from 1954 to 1977. Nothing cooler than what that. A scam, Nothing dude. cooler than that. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that helped his career or not, but. You probably heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad he plays the overcome. oboe. In the nerd circle, this is a big deal, man. <laughs> is, I don't remember how we, how we discovered that fact. <laughs> you think he hates the oboe? Because I would. I mean, how could you not? No, Your dad he, was playing it all no, the time. No. In the case of John Delancey Jr., I imagine his success is to spite his father. It was, it was, it feels like it's more like I'm going to overcome and overpower my you know. oboe playing father. Yeah. No one he's will the, remember his name when I'm done. He's the quirkiest Star Trek. I'm gonna play the sousaphone, Dad. Boop boop. <laughs> 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 And then we have uh, Drew Barrymore's grandfather, John Barrymore. Uh, he was born in Philadelphia, and he gained fame for his groundbreaking Shakespearean performances and uh, his silent film career. He's from Philly? Yep. 
And he used to perform at what the Walnut Street Theater. Yeah, and... truck. Yeah. You know, so was Drew Barrymore from Philly, or she was just like no. No, they. No. J- John moved out of here uh, when he got famous. He uh, he went out to L.A. and uh, made silent films, and then his son was a famous actor, and then his son's daughter is Drew Barrymore. I want to give a shout out to Ruben Amaro Sr., Philly, and uh, Cuban born Cuban Philly, and his son was Rob Ruben Amaro Jr., who's still involved with the team and. He was the GM um, for years. He was. Uh, he was a player, GM, and then he's a broadcaster, yeah, he's a commentator. And, yeah. Uh, the the Amaros have been in Philly for years. I mean, that's. I think that's cool, especially. But he like, stayed in Philly. Everyone else leaves. He was like, I'm gonna. I don't know if he lives here, but he at least <laughs> he at least comes here for work. That's all you can ask. And and Ruben Amaro Jr. played Ruben Amaro Senior in the Goldbergs. Oh, nice. So, that's funny. That's, cool. that's really great. That's how, I think that's, got, cool. that's how he got that role. Let's be let's be that's, honest. That's true. That is Nepo. But it is. He did become a like. All right, my dad is a Philly. Oh, yeah. I happen to be a Philly. Yeah. So. He was the Ronnie know. James. But I like so. that. I don't know. It, it's they didn't play it, together, right? They didn't have. They didn't play around. together. No. Um, it's definitely a rare thing. But I think. Sometimes we hate Nepo babies, and sometimes we're like, oh, that's great. This one I think is great. Okay, that's pretty much all there is to know about Philly Nepo babies. Please check out our website, www.southfellini.com. That's S O U T H F E L L I N I.com for cool Philly inspired merch. Visit us at 1507 East Passyunk Avenue in beautiful South Philly. Check us out on Instagram, Spotify, Apple iTunes, YouTube, and Patreon, where all Patreon, new episodes Patreon, will be posted Patreon. in the future. And other stuff. If you thought this was good, Wait till you're paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> We're at South Fellini everywhere. Follow along and join in the conversation. We want to hear from you. Look out for new episodes of the podcast on Patreon. 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 Stay safe, Patreon. wash your hands, and keep it in the family. Big kiss goodbye. Mm-hmm.